Shalom. Call hello la Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, which is all praises to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people in the world eagerly call God by Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shah, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who you people in the world eagerly call Jesus Christ. Once again, the true names of Heavenly Father and the Son is Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Also, Shalom. To, to uh, you, Akim, you brothers that's pushing the spread in this word, throughout the four corners of the earth, who's also uplifting their names, Yahweh, by Hashem El Shah, Shalom, to you, Akim, once again. Also, Shalom to the Israelite foreigners, the speckled bird, man, woman, and child, whose bloodline traces back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, though you may look like the heathen nations you scattered amongst, which the heathen nations are the nations starting from two on down, as you see on this chart, those are the heathen nations. Also, if your sea line or your bloodline goes back to these people as you see in this chart through the man and if his spirit bear witness with this word and this truth he could receive it to the speckled bird man woman child this does apply okay then you are Israelites though once again you do look like the other nations due to the scattering of these people in this chart so you will have Israelites that look like the heathen but the Israelites due to them being under curses of Deuteronomy 28 the 15 verse 1 down the spirit bear witness with this word that they're the children of your sons and daughters of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Also, once again, their lineage goes back to these people through the man. To the few aquafers, your sisters that do this and learn, Shalom. To the elect of the nation of Israel, wherever you may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, whose world's going out to, Shalom to you as well. To you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you combine, consist, and make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen people. Of the Most High Yahweh and His Only Begotten Son, you can call Jesus Christ once again Yahweh Shah. And um, I'm just gonna get straight to it because now they're talking about a universal basic income. So I'm gonna play a portion of this clip and I'm gonna get the scriptures. But Esau wants you people completely dependent on this system for when, because we in the time he's rolling out this new world order. So I'm gonna just play it. You know, the politicians can talk about it, but the problem is they're every day they're burning time that small business owners don't have uh, to, to play with. As tens of Americans, uh, millions of Americans lose their jobs and their businesses, one thing's become very clear. Something needs to change. The economic inequality in our society have only increased since the pandemic began. With so many people struggling to make ends meet, there need to be serious conversations about the best solutions for helping people move forward. And one of the things we've discussed on this show, universal basic income, a guaranteed income, is one way for us to not only close the gap of inequality, but also make sure that people can weather the storm until the storm ends. Now, UBI, as it's called, is controversial. Political leaders like Nancy Pelosi, Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Markey have come out in support of similar plans during this pandemic. Now, a new survey showed that, in fact, 76% of all Americans, both Democrats and Republicans, support a guaranteed income. There have been attempts in the past to test out what happens if Americans are given a no-strings-attached income. The most recent, the Magnolia Mothers Trust, has been giving $1,000 payments to 15 low-income African-American mothers, allowing them to have some flexibility as they attempt to survive the pandemic. With me now is Aisha Niandoro, the CEO of Springboard to Opportunities, which runs the Magnolia's, uh, Magnolia Mothers Trust Initiative. Aisha, good to see you again. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. You and I talked about this some time ago um, in which uh, there was an experiment in which women were given, these mothers were given this money uh, on a no-strings-attached basis. To a lot of people, that goes against what they think uh, work and money should should be about. Tell me why it works and, and what you've seen as a result. Yeah, no, thank you. And thank you so much for having me here to have this really important conversation. And what it is that we're seeing that cash does, it really does allow you the opportunity to have breathing room and to show up and not worry about your day-to-day -day existence because you know that your basic needs are taken care of. We did our first iteration of the Magnolia Mothers Trust where we ended our pilot in December of 2019, where those 20 families demonstrated that 100% of them indicated that their basic needs were met, that they were now optimistic 
optimistic about their future, that they were able to plan and had less stress. And prior to COVID-19 really having the impact that we're seeing that it has now, or will have long term, we did the lottery in the iteration of the next demonstration. So now 80 women, 80 families are receiving $1,000 a month for 12 months with no strings attached. And already we are seeing the benefit that this is having on their lives and their livelihood and their families. Women are telling us that despite the fact that they've already lost their jobs, that they've already lost hours, that they know that they'll be able to take care of themselves and their families. And like you say, in weather this storm for the duration of this storm, because this isn't a two month or a three month pandemic, we don't know how long this will end. So knowing that individuals have what it is that they need to not be stressed and to continue to still thinking, thinking optimistically about their future, that goes a long way right now. I want to uh, put up a map of uh, the places in the United States where there have been experiments with universal basic income. When you and I first talked about this, we talked. So I'm going uh, to just leave it right there, okay? For time's sake, I'm on the clock, but, um, okay? But it's funny, you know, the first person that pops up is Jake. It's so, you know, Eve, the so-called black woman, an Israelite woman, you know? But... What this what Esau Edom was Esau Edom is a so called Caucasian race. What he's doing is he's he's giving you people all this free money, okay? To sit, basically sit at home and just get money. Thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, okay? Just r- free money. In which I always bring out that 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 money that you that you're receiving, okay, it buys less, okay? And for one, it's not even real money. Gold and silver is real money. You know, what he's what he's doing is he wants to get you people, your mom, your mind's prepped, you know, for this uh, new world order that he's rolling. Because we're in him. All this is basically Esau Edom rolling or uh, uh, setting up the new world order. OK, that's all it is. And he has to get you people, you know, especially you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. You know, he has to get your minds prepped. For when he wrote, so when he roll out this RFID chip, which I'm gonna get, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be easily read. Uh, you people are gonna be willing to take it, man. And real quick, real scripture. Actually, you know what? Second Corinthians two and eleven, right? Let's see, it says, "Less Satan, no spiritual. You got the spiritual demon Satan. You got the physical counterpart, which is the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan on the planet Earth and the flesh. All these Edomites, man, so-called white people, man, that's ruling, should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant, you know, of what's going on right now, okay?" It's clear as day that, you know, it's clear as day that uh this man, he's trying to get you fully reliant on his system, this system, as you people already are, you know. So when he rolled his RFID chip out, the mark of the beast, okay, you're going you gonna to be rarely, you're going to be willing to take it, man. You know, this is what this is all about, because this man, he's not about, you know, he's not about, you know, Caring about people. He's not about, you know, caring for your health. Okay? He's not about caring about you losing your jobs or your future. He doesn't give a shit. He cares about starting with the elite banking families. All they care about is what? Setting this new world order up. That birthright and that blessing. That's what it all goes back to. Right? And let me get Matthew 24 and 24. For this shall arise false Hamashiachs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. And this is what, and that false prophet. Really, it could be Esau as well, man. Okay? With his movies. You know, he set up these different, you know, pastors. You know? To spread lies and blasphemies. You know? And this great sign is one that he's rolling out. 
Okay, really, through this system, is is going to be that RFID chip. You know, he they already doing it. You know, you watch videos of the RFID chip, you'll see uh them putting a, a, a chip in somebody or giving them a chip. And that person, he could be, you know, paralyzed from the waist down or paralyzed from the waist up. Or he can't see or, you know, his back don't work. And they'll give you a chip. And you can start walking in somewhat to some form again. That's one of them signs and wonders that Esau's rolling out to you. Right now, you got people that's in the economic shamble, which is all, you know, it's all planned and premeditated by the elite banking families, okay? That this happened, okay? And this sign, what's the sign of wonders right now? For right now, it's these stimulus checks. Right now, is the universal basic income, whether they do it or not, which I believe they're going to do it. Okay, it's all hands on deck right now, you know? And then soon it's going to go from that to being what? That chip, the RFID chip, right? That if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. It says if it were possible, meaning what? It's not going to happen. You're not going to deceive the elect, okay? The elect, whoever they may be, they know, you know, what your, your plans are, man. Okay, they know they're not blind like, you know, they're not groping in the noonday as the rest of these people. They see clearly what you're getting ready to do. You know, we see what you're doing. We see that you're getting ready, to, that you're setting up, you're collapsing the economy to set up this new world order. Okay? You're not fooling nobody, you know? And that's why Esau is mad. You know? The Lord has preserved 7,000 men with seven. It's complete, you know, that they, to, that they should not bow down to the image of Baal, man. Okay? They're not going to bow down to the system, man. Even if it means them being put to death, which really are not being put to death, you know. But you guys, you guys say to yourself, man, you really believe that this man is really for your well-being? Okay, this man will put drugs in your neighborhood, okay, and then tell you, okay, we got a rehab center. Which really, you know, he'll, uh, 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 you know, he'll say there's a flu out there and say, well, we got a cure to the flu. Just come and get this shot. Okay, you get the shot. You even more sicker than... Before you got the shot. So this man's all about profit. He's all about money. He's all about greed. He's just wicked. That's all he is. You know? He's not about, you know, your well-being. Okay? Because if that was the case, he wouldn't have, you know, uh, uh, told you people you couldn't work over an uh, uh, unseen virus. You know? Showing you the, the true intents of this man. But if you how about Shema Shai and give you the spirit to see, you know, through... You know, the madness, you know, then you're just going to be caught up in the web of lies, man. That's all it is, you know. This man, he's not about your well-being, man. Okay? You got these people out here that say the government this, the government that. You know, they're going to take care of us, you know. They're going to make sure we are uh, good. Nah, man. Okay? Let me see. Hold on. Bear with me real quick. See, he saw he what he does is he plays, you know. He plays both sides. He tries. He's trying to be the most high, basically. He's trying to. He creates. He try to create. You know the chaos, and he tries to come with the solution. That's what the most high does. You know. Let me see. All right. So let me just get uh that Jeremiah thirteen. You know. In 23, this man is not about your well-being. He's about your destruction, right? Let me see. It's, uh, Jeremiah 13 and 22. And if thou say in thy heart, wherefore come things these things upon me for the greatness of thine iniquity are the skirts discovered, and thy heels made bare, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leper his spots? Then may he also do good that are accustomed to do evil. And this is talking about the wicked right here, man. This is talking about Esau Edom, man. Okay? Esau is accustomed to do evil. He was created to be the wicked. He's not about uh, uh changing 
you know, and making things for the better. Okay, he's about destroying things. He's about stealing things. He's about lying, you know, to do those things. You know, that's all he's about. Okay, this man is it's not a righteous bone or a righteous soul within these people. Okay? Yeah, they laugh. Yeah, they speak with, you know, sweet and bitter words. You know? But it's, it's really, you know, it's really him plotting to overthrow you. It's really him plotting to, uh, uh, uh you know... To uh, get above you, you know, to use you, you know, and you Israelites, you gonna take the. It's many you Israelites that's going, you know, it's gonna take the bait, you know, because if you go back in the book of Exodus, in ancient Egypt, right quick, dealing with our people back in ancient Egypt, I'm just gonna try to get to the point. Let me see. The same thing. Our people was what? They was in captivity under who? Pharaoh, you know? And uh the Lord, he just you know, Pharaoh, he was really oppressive. He was, you know, he was doing the same thing Esau Edom was doing. Except Esau Edom is doing it on a higher level, you know. So let me uh just read from the first part. Exodus 14 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn in a camp before Pahiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness have shut them up, shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them, and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. That the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord Yahweh by Hashem El Shah, and they did also, or the Lord Yahweh, and they did also, and they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and all of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this thing? And that we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots. And all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. And the same thing's happening with the new Pharaoh, Esau Edom. Okay, his society, his rulership, his dominion over the planet Earth. You know, his grip on the planet Earth. Okay, his witchcraft, everything. It's all falling to pieces. But the Lord's hardening his heart. To the point where he's still going to try to roll this new order out. But anyway. But the Egyptians pursued after him all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army. And overtook them at camping by the sea beside Pehiroth before Baal-Saphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out. Unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than, than that we should die in the wilderness. So you see that mindset, you know, it's the same mindset. Because them same spirits is back. Them same Israelites is back. They, they're back in the form of the two-thirds. Okay? The two-thirds, the point being is, that was in ancient Egypt. They didn't want to leave uh, 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 ancient Egypt. They didn't want to, uh, they wanted to continue serving, you know, the ancient uh, Pharaoh. But why? Because it's the same thing now. You know, they got a job. They got, you know, all the goodies that this society could offer. You know? It was the same thing that happened and, uh, ancient Egypt, you know, we was being oppressed in ancient Egypt, but there was still things that the Israel, our people, you know, were into, and they didn't want to depart from that. It's the same thing with this system. They don't want to unplug, you know, from this system, okay? And uh, that's gonna be their downfall, you know. Now, like I say, if you get a, a stimulus check or something, it's okay, you know, to get a stimulus check, but to put all your trust in it to to the point where you know you don't, you know, uh. You don't trust in your how about Shema Shah speaking to you so-called Negroes 
Latinos, Native Americans, that's going off. If you trust completely in this Esau and this system, but you don't trust in Yahweh Shah, that's that's something different, man. That's going completely off. Okay. But the scriptures say a gift destroys the heart, you know. Let me see. Uh, but this is what Esau wants. He's conditioning you, you know, to trust in the uh Egypt, man. To trust in his system, to trust in him, you know. Isaiah 1 and 30, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with the covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And like I said, if you're getting a check, or you need a check, you're in a dire straits right now, you know, and you get that check, that's good. But to put your trust completely into Esau and his system, that's going off, you know. And it said in that verse, that walk to go down to Egypt, because this is spiritual Egypt. And have not asked in my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be ashamed and the trust in the shadow of Egypt be a confusion. That's what's starting to happen. Okay? They've been telling you that the economy was booming, was doing good, and now what's happening? You got millions upon millions upon millions of people losing their jobs, man. Losing everything that they work for. All them dreams of becoming this, going to that. It's all through, man. You can't do nothing now. Because you're you wondering what the hell is going on. Because it's your shame and confusion. Because you trust in the Esau. You know? You don't put your faith and trust in Yahweh Bashim al Shah. Which Yahweh Bashim al Shah gave Esau, okay? He put Esau in power. He gave Esau the fatness of the earth. You know? I'm going to skip down, you know? Because show you that this is the same mindset that they had. The, the same mindset that was in ancient Egypt they have right now. It says, now go write it before them in the table and know in the book that it may be for the time to come forever and never. You know these scriptures, the true intent of them, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You will hear the law of Esau, Edom, but you don't want to. You will abide and obey the law of Esau, Edom, but you won't abide and obey the law of such as the commandments of Yahweh by Shema Shah, you know. To the best of your ability. Because we can't keep everything in captivity. You know. But you got the two thirds. They're not willing to do anything for you. How about Shemel Shah. Because they don't see it as it profiting them. They're not getting something carnal. Or there's something they could touch. You know. So they, let me go on. We'll say to the seers. See not. And to the prophets. Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy the seats. Get you out of the way. Turn out aside. Out of the path caused the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And that's the state in the two thirds. Okay? They don't want to hear, you know, what Yahweh by Shema Shah, you know, has to offer. The fact that he could deliver you from your enemies, that you won't have to work no more. We're going to be rulers, man. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, you know, all nations can make it. You know, they want to hear that the economy is going to come back, that they're going to be able to go back to work. Everything's going to go back to normal. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear smooth things. You're not going to hear that. Okay? When it comes to Yahweh Bashim al Shah, the 12th verse, wherefore it thus said the Holy One of Israel, because you despise his word and trust in oppression, because you trust in your, your captor, man. You want this place to continue back as normal as you trusting in, okay? Your oppressor, man. That's madness. But like I said, a gift destroys the heart, the mind. Because you despise his word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay there on. And this is Isaiah 36. And six or five, and I say, say as thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now whom does thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed, because this system is broken, man. It's clear as day that this 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 uh America is crumbling, it's going to fall, man. And it's going to eventually be destroyed, man. Just like the scriptures say it was gonna happen. Okay? It's clear as day. And you still got you, you know, Israelites that want that's going, you know, go as far to taking the RFID chip, the mark of the beast, to maintain in a system that's going to be destroyed. What type of sense does that make? It says, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So if Pharaoh, so is Pharaoh the king of Egypt to, to all that trust in him. What's that talking about? 
Revelations 13 and 16, because this is the end game. This is what Esau is getting you people prepped for. This is uh, Revelation 16, 13 and 16. And he calls of all who? The elite banking families, the Edomites. Okay? All, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, so it don't matter the, the status that you have within the society. Everybody is going to be, you know, required to take this chip, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay? And this is why you see all these mom and pop uh, pop stores being destroyed. That's their intent, to destroy all the mom and pop uh, shops. So you can only go to, like, Walmart, Costco's, Amazon. It'll be easier from the track who's buying what, you know? It says, here's the wisdom. Let him that have understand and count the number of the beast, for it is the number of his man, number of a man. That man is who? Esau Edom. And his number is 603 score 6. 666. Six, six. And a lot of things, you know, like the barcodes on the back of your products, okay, it's 666. So this is the man talking about, you know? So that's what it's talking about, uh, that you trust so much in the land of Egypt and your oppression that you will lean upon and will pierce it through. And it's talking about that chip, man. And this is what Esau is getting ready to do, okay? But the elect, they're not going to be ignorant of the devices that this man is pulling. They see what this man is getting ready to implement. You know, Revelations, I got to hurry up. Revelations 14 and 9. And then third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image. Okay, the system is the image, is the system of the beast, which the beast make up uh, uh, America, the EU and NATO, man. This beast system, you know, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured without mixture. And to the cup of his indignation, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. So if you are Israelite, you are so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, you take that chip, the Lord's going to destroy you, man. And he's going to make you suffer, okay? And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his hand and his name, you know? So it's best, you know, you you uh uh put all your trust in Yahweh by Shemal Shah. Don't take the chip. Even if you get put to death, Yahweh by Shemal Shah is still gonna be with you. You know? So I'm gonna uh end it there. Call Hello Allah Yahweh by Shemal Shah. Uh Shalawam, you know, to the elect. Baba Gashah, Baba Ba, Baba Ba, Baha Yabia, Baha Yabia, and Shalawam once again.